Hi, this is your Mr. Security 702, and today we are going to discuss the definition of the word hypothesis, the definition of the word theory, and the difference between the two. Most of my videos, this one included, will contain references to outside sources. All references contained within each video will be contained within the description of the corresponding video. Some of the references will be on the internet. Some of them will require you to crack open a book. According to the Oxford English Dictionary Online, a hypothesis is a supposition made on the basis of limited evidence as a starting point for further investigation. According to the textbook Chemistry, the Central Science, 11th edition, a, hypo a hypothesis is a tentative explanation based on a perceived pattern being seen. Let us utilize an example. Jack notices that drinking a particular clear liquid makes him feel better. It makes him feel healthier. He therefore concludes that all clear liquids are safe to consume orally. This is merely a hypothesis. The clear liquid in question, of course, is water. This hypothes hypothesis is incorrect because, well, sulfuric acid is also a clear liquid and if you drink that, you will find yourself being eaten from the inside out. Jill, on the other hand, notices that if she pushes a uh, the uh, crosswalk button, the pedestrian walks oh, walk sign tends to switch on quicker. This is merely a hypothesis from her perspective. However, this hypothesis is in fact correct. We as adults know that the cross crosswalk sign was designed to have the button make the green walk guy turn on quicker. So we have deduced that hypotheses can be correct and they can be incorrect. Now let us take an actual case which happens to be famous. Albert Einstein's famed general theory of relativity was all was not always a theory. In fact, before the British astronomer Arthur Eddington observed that there was a noticeable observed apparent shift in the position of stars during the total eclipse of 1919, the aforementioned theory wasn't a theory at all, but rather a hypothesis. Only after 1919 was that the, uh, hypothesis a theory. Now, for the definition of the word theory. According to the Oxford English Dictionary Online, a theory is a supposition or a system of ideas intended to explain something, especially one based on general principles independent of the thing to be explained. According to the textbook Chemistry, the Central Science, 11th edition, <clears throat> a theory is an explanation of the general causes of cer certain phenomena, with considerable evidence or facts to support it. Let's say that I have a hypothesis about a particular property of brick walls. The hypothesis goes as follows. If I punch a brick wall with all my might, there will be little, if any, damage to the wall, but there will be considerable damage to my hand. At this stage, it is still merely hypothesis, logical as it may be. Now, let us say I want to be an idiot and test this hypothesis, and by going out back and punching the wall that separates my property from my neighbors. I punch it with my left hand as hard as I can. 
I feel pain. There's bruising and cuts to my hand and after, uh, afterwards that weren't there before. And I think, eh, this might be a fluke, so I do the same with my right hand. Same results. I have a few idiot friends punch the wall with both hands with the same results. Now the hypothesis about humans punching brick walls has been tested and confirmed many times. Therefore, it holds as theory. I have a well-tested theory about humans punching a brick wall. But let's say I get someone who is expertly trained in a martial art to come along and punch the wall. But with different results. His hand is not bruised or cut or harmed in any way, but the wall is damaged. The spot that he punches breaks completely. Does that mean my theory should be completely abolished? Of course not. It may just need to be altered to fit the circumstances. The theory before the martial arts uh, trained punch would go, if a human punches a brick wall, there would be no damage to the wall and a lot of damage to the hand. After the people who are expertly trained punch the wall, it is altered to read, if a human who is not expertly trained in martial arts punches a brick wall, there will be no damage to the wall and a lot of damage to the hand. However, if a human who is expertly trained in martial arts punches a wall, he or she can inflict heavy damage upon the wall with little or no damage to his or her hand. Notice the difference there? The theory went from encompassing all humans to encompassing all humans who are not expertly trained in martial arts. This is how theories work. This is how science works. Now, the difference between the two terms lies in how well tested the statement in question is. If it is merely a, I noticed something moment, then it is a hypothesis. It will continue being a hypothesis until experimentation is performed and observations are made. When said experimentation is performed and observations made, it becomes a theory. The more experimentation performed and the more observations made, the better the theory. When the I noticed something moment becomes well tested and well established, then it turns into I have a testable law to how something works and I can make predictions based on said law. And let's take the brick wall, for instance. It went from being an untested hypothesis to a slightly altered, well-tested theory. With the wall, now that I have a theory, I can make predictions on future instances of people punching walls. That is all for now. Thank you for watching. This is Mr. Security702, signing out.